Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. Um, today is Thursday and I plan on going a totally different direction, but I woke up to my Instagram group chat and the brother Scorpio had said, WA Productions have released a new plugin, this time by the name of Instascale. So I checked my other sources out and no one's heard of it. I checked YouTube out, no videos yet. I went to the product page. No videos yet. So I have to give a disclaimer before I do this video. I have no idea what this is about. And I'm MG and you know what I'm about. But I did experiment with it a little bit. It's made by WA Productions who brought us Instacord. So I'm gonna drag Instascale in by itself. I'm gonna try to explain this as best as possible because it is quite confusing if you've never seen this before. On surface level, you're gonna have a preset menu of scales. So in this case, let's try to do something I really want to use Hirajoshi, which is a Japanese scale. And I believe it's a pentatonic scale or five key scale. So that's what these keys right here are going to reflect. And just like Instacord, what you're playing is at the very bottom and what you're playing is not notes. What you play dictates what notes are triggered, which are in the scale. And you notice they're blue or green if they're in scale, they're yellow if they're root. Right above that is the programming for this thing. So think of the bottom as kind of like pads or a MIDI controller of a generic random instrument. And think of these as the parameters of what each of those pads or keys do. Then across the top, of course, that's where you choose your scale and things like this. It looks like you can add a lot more. You can click on edit scale and I'm assuming customize your own. This language I don't quite understand, but I know we can go to a few websites and just fill that in. Um, home is gonna be on the first, which is the first note, which is the root key. And then octave you could change and you're gonna to want to change it to trigger certain instruments. So before I get too far ahead of myself, let's bring an instrument up. I'm gonna go to Clev Grand. Let's do Synth. Now let's map this correctly. And it's really simple. You expand your instrument channel on under all inputs. Go ahead and choose Insta Scale. And now you're gonna be playing from here. Make sure your MIDI controller though is in the range that these keys are in. So you'll see C5 up to B6, wherever that is. Bong, bong. So the trickiest thing about this instrument is that everything's based on programming. So right now on my actual MIDI control, I'm hitting the letter or key A. A is only triggering something called home and home is the root note. Now when I trigger home, it's going to trigger the home or root note of the scale I select, which is going to be the key of C. So this is a confuse a lot of people about Insta chords. Just know that home just is the root note. So when I change this root note to say, let's say A, when I hit A on my MIDI controller, now it's hitting the actual key of A on my instrument or the scale that I'm selected. So let's make this a little bit more confusing. F, so I'm gonna hit A again, and now F is triggered, which is right here. To hear this, let's turn monitoring on on synth. Right, I'm hitting A, but that's the key of F being triggered. Now, I wanna lower this octave. I wanna lower this octave again. Now every other key besides home, and it's all white keys, is an interval from the home. So if I hit home and I hit minus one, you're gonna notice on this animation here, it went down one. If I hit it again, it went down one again. If I hit it again, it went down one again. Now if I go on the other side and hit B, which means plus one, it goes back up. Keep in mind, that's all within the scale that we selected, Hiro Joshi. Now, from this point forward, that's all I got, guys. <laughs> These keys change the rhythm or the steps that this is moving through your scale, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the home key is there to put you back to where you started. So I'll do something like. You end up using this more so like an arpeggio or an arpeggiator. Now, another cool thing that I did figure out is that they have this one black key mapped to R. R is right here and that's set to repeat. What it's repeating is home or the last key. So if I hit home, it hits home. If I hit home and then minus one, it hits minus one again. So you'd be like. Or I can switch it to something else, another interval, of course. And I believe these different intervals would then allow you to leave the scale or so, or go up an octave or down an octave. But the one I, that's interesting to me is nearest. So instead of home always being where my octave is, nearest will round up the octave that your last key is on. So as I go down with negative one, I'm gonna hit this little A sharp key to bring it to nearest home. So home first, Negative one, negative one, negative one, 
Now I'm getting to another octave. Negative one, negative one. I won't pass it, and I won't hit nearest. It goes back to that one instead of this one. And what that's cool for is that when you're doing melodies and stuff or arps and you get carried away with all your negatives or pluses and moving through these keys, you don't have to abruptly uh, finish your circle or finish your progression always at the same root. It could be a root further down the scale. So I want to give you an example of what that sounds like. Now to demonstrate what this is actually doing, I'm gonna show you the MIDI file. These are keys that I am playing, which don't mean anything to me note-wise. What the only thing that they mean is the relationship of intervals that is moving through my scale. And I'm only playing them like I would an arpeggiator or I'm freestyling a rhythm, a feeling, and I'm listening to it, but it's not in a way that I know what's happening. I'm only using my ears for this. Because this is set up the way it is, we can record what it's outputting so we can see the difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Bomb. So now when we look at my output, this is what it's playing in the scale key and note wise. So keep that in mind. Now the next big problem that I have is that, all right, I know what this melody is, and I know I'm gonna want chords or something to accompany it, but I don't know what. And because I use this Hirojoshi scale, I would want to set my piano roll to Hirojoshi, but guess what? It's not there. So people like me who don't know all the scales by heart in terms of what keys belong to them, I could probably use something else, which is Scalar. And a lot of people like Scalar, so I know you guys would want to see that too. So I'm bringing Scalar into the mix. Scalar's in the mix. Scalar detects scales. So I'm bringing this MIDI file down. Let's turn this detect mode on and let's see what we get. I don't know what this crackling is in Scalar though. Not a fan right now, but it worked. So now I get this view of all these scales that it can be. I'm starting on the key of F, so I'm gonna see if any of these scales begin with F just to help me with the root. And well, what do we know? F Phrygian is the scale that Hirojoshi's in, right? Exotic, Latin, lively. Now I can put this back to where it came from and I can set this to F and then Phrygian. I don't have to worry about moving this to the wrong note. It'll skip all the keys not in that scale. Phrygian might have a few extra keys though, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's a seven key scale. So to help me with that, let's go back to Scalar real quick. Let's pick F Phrygian from here. Let's do scales, note, F type, Phrygian dominant. Cut it out, bong, bong. Yeah, seven, seven keys or chords in that one. Cool, so my melody's five keys max, and my chords can be any variation of seven which will give this more context musically. Scalar's not behaving properly at all. It's cutting the volume. Oh no, just triggering this makes it glitch a little bit. So hopefully if Instacort, the Scalar guys, or Presonus is watching this, come on guys, let's fix this. This, this is gonna be problematic. So my first chord, I'm gonna make it an F regardless. The next chord I'm gonna put here, that's gonna be a C regardless, a C diminished. The next one is going to be C sharp or D flat. D flat, and then my chord on the way out is gonna be D flat again. And I think I can flip these. I want chord variations on the C diminished, I don't like it. Cool, what else? So I got the chords that I want. Now I could drag this as a MIDI track to synth spear and do the ghost channel thing, or I could put easy keys in rotation. I'm gonna have to pin these so they don't move when I drag and drop. So I'm gonna go to the top right corner there, pin that, still visible, export MIDI. Bong bong, humanize is fine. All right, drop scalar, move this back to the beginning of the sequence, zoom in on it, because what I want to do is chop these up on even beats, and then I want to move it accordingly. And I have to drag this one all the way out so that it takes up the whole two or four bar loop when I do that. I want to try that. It ain't going to work though. And now I wanna look at these notes real quick with both of them in the background and highlight all these, move them down an octave and see if they're overlapping with most of them. There's an extra key there, but for the most part, it looks like they're in the same scale. Let's drop it down one more. That's the same. There's some overlap. There's some extra keys in this mix that are missing. But I wanna trust this is a Phrygian, fingers crossed. So Easy Keys took the liberty of changing some of the chords. I'm gonna live with it because the melody is only five. All right, 
and I see something else I like. I like this here better, and I like this as well. Let's try it like that. Now my melody is too low. Let's move those up. Uh. Money. Now because Easy Keys converted these to chords for me based on the data from the melody that I created and then of course the analysis of Scalar. And I, I'll, I'll, forgive me guys if I'm going really deep for a lot of you. But if you look back some of my older videos, I explain each one of these individually. This is just my current bring it together moment so that we can make sense out of instant scale until the official videos drop. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and right click this. I'm gonna convert this to a chord track or extract to chord track. These are gonna be my chords that it found in Easy Keys that I created in Scalar, but they're in a different language now, which is fine. I'm going to create a bass track, do some 808s on it to make this really disrespectful and ignorant. That's just my style. You do what you do. She sounds lovely. Command M, bring up Melodyne. You are in the key of D. Now when I go to my sample one, I'm gonna drag 80814 into it. And then right here, someone asked this in my last video, how did I set the root? Right here where it says root. I'm just gonna type in D3. That's the octave is in the three. The D is what Melodyne showed me that was. A lot of you guys got me being conscientious of, uh, or shifty, because almost every video I get a shortcut tutorial, which is funny, because I never use them. I always use my mouse ever since I was little. I was popping my collar and using a mouse. Now. That's all good. Now this track, I have follow my chord track. So follow chords, bass, money, let's run it. There's one more trick I wanna try though. I feel like stunting just a little bit. Let me see if this works. I don't know if this works yet. I haven't done this yet. Because this score track is so profound, I want to know if it'll do the chord thing too. So I'm gonna try some violins or something. So I'm gonna record some C minor chords. And these are not in the scale or anything like that. This is more of a flex of see if Studio One could process them to the right chords according to chord track. So I'm just gonna do stabs with C minor. So that sounds terrible because it's not in key. But now I'm gonna do follow chords and try parallel. Oh, go ahead and drag that over there, boy. All right. Stop playing. And let's try narrow. They are in the scale. That's lit. That's lit. I'll end this on this note, man. Like, Insta Scale, it, it, its novelty is if you struggle with melodies. Just my eyes just started tearing up for no reason. It's a learning tool, first and foremost. All of these are learning tools. So I hope. You guys learned something from this. Hopefully, um, you understand how to use Studio One with these tools, and more importantly, hopefully, Insta Scale kind of stands out and might be something you want to check out while it's still on sale. But anyway, I'm MG the Future. Until next time, guys. Peace.